Welcome to the ABCs of Herbal Extractions. My name is Gail Engels and I'm the Special Projects Director for the American Botanical Council. The purpose of this presentation is to provide some information to help the viewer understand the basics of herbal extraction. It is by no means comprehensive and if the viewer is interested in learning more and or making her or his own herbal medicines, please refer to the books mentioned later in the presentation. Better yet, I encourage you to find an herbal medicine maker in your area who gives classes. If you want to make good, effective herbal medicines, there is a lot more to learn than is covered in this short presentation. The first thing to take into consideration when making an herbal extraction are solvents and solubility. Sol solvents are liquids used to dissolve or extract soluble components to form a solution. Using the appropriate solvent for specific plant materials is the key to producing a successful extraction. Water is by far the most commonly used solvent in making herbal extractions. It is important to always use clean, filtered, or spring water. Water is inexpensive. It's stable. It's reliable with regard to its ability to extract more components than any other solvent. It does not have much preservative power though. Alcohol, also stable, has the best preservative power of the solvents that we currently have access to and it extracts different components than water does. So if you use a mixture of alcohol and water, you get the best of both. You get the preservative power of the alcohol and the water tempers the taste of the alcohol in the finished product. Plus, you extract both water and alcohol soluble components. Wine and vinegar are also used as solvents. They are both preservative, but you have to be aware that each of them is going to provide a different flavor profile based on what kind of wine or what kind of vinegar you use. And they are not as reliable as some of the other solvents in their ability to extract certain chemical components from the herbs. Oil is also a good solvent for specific situations. Mainly it's used for topical uses. So when you're making a oil to use to make a salve for use on the skin. It's very sensual so it adds to, you know, people are more likely to use it because it feels good when they rub it on their skin. Glycerin is another solvent and it's a good alternative to alcohol, specifically for children or other people who are alcohol intolerant. Infusions and decoctions, what are they? Well, they are tisans. The people who are tea purists don't like herbal tea makers to use the word tea because they think tea only refers, should only refer to Camellia sinensis and they have a point. So we refer to herbal infusions and decoctions as tisans, which is a French word that just means infusion or decoction. So what's the difference? Depends on whether you steep or simmer. So if you're using soft plant parts like leaves, flowers, soft stems, not woody ones, these would make an infusion. You would put them in a nice clean container, pour water that's almost boiling or past the boil and settle down a little bit. You'd let it sit covered for approximately 5 to 15 minutes depending on the strength preferred or required. You're often extracting essential oils from these soft plant parts. So what you want to do, you always want to cover it while it's steeping because you want to keep all the beneficial bits in the cup or the pot. So as the steam starts rising when the hot water hits the plant parts, if it hits the underside of a lid, it's all going to drop back down into your infusion. So you're getting all that herbal goodness when you drink it. If you're using hard plant parts, like the roots, the woody stems, seeds, then you need to make a decoction. And to do that, you would put the plant parts in a pot, cover them with water, and you would simmer them for 
20 minutes or so, and that's going to release the chemical constituents that are more tightly bound up in these hard plant parts. Tisans are the easiest herbal extractions to make. They don't last a long time, two to three days in the refrigerator, but they're very easy to make and they can be the basis for other extractions. Only use organic plant material. You want to use material that you've grown yourself, that you know has been grown in a clean organic manner, or you want to buy it from a reputable source that you know hasn't used herbicides, pesticides, or non-organic fertilizers. You're going to put these extracts in your body for health or enjoyment, and you want to be sure that they're as high quality as possible, as clean as possible. You don't want to add toxins to your body when you're trying to improve your health. Be sure to label your products once you've made them. This particular product is calendula and in apricot kernel oil, and I assure you it did get labeled eventually. But you don't want to trust yourself to remember later what's in the bottle. Because a lot of them look, look the same. I mean, alcohol, a lot of alcohol tinctures, they're just brown. You know, and so unless you really recognize the smell, it's going to be hard for you to know, or for someone else maybe who shares your house and wants to use your herbal products too. Plus, you want to be able to reproduce your successes, so you need to know what you use to make the extraction. What plant did you use? How much of it? What solvent did you use? How much of that? Additionally, everything has a shelf life, so be sure to put the date on it that you bottle your product. There are two different ways, two different methods of making herbal extracts, the apothecary method and the folk method. The apothecary method is more stringent. When you do the apothecary method, you weigh and measure everything. And this is what's required for use in clinical and retail settings. If you're making products to sell, or to give to uh, patients, then you need to be able to duplicate your results. So you want to be sure that every batch you make is exactly like the previous batch, unless, of course, you're improving on your formula. The folk or kitchen method is much faster and easier, and it's the way our ancestors did it. So what you would do is basically maybe take a quart jar, stuff it full of whatever plant material mint or echinacea flowers or whatever you're using, and then fill your jar up with your solvent. Label it, cover it, put it in a dark place, shake it every once in a while, and in two to six weeks you've got your extract. This is a fine method for yourself and friends and family. You just need to be aware that you won't really know what the dosage is when you use the folk method. So there's some common equipment that you should use if you're going to make herbal extractions. You'd want to have a scale, either a triple beam or a good digital scale that measures milligrams, a calculator so that you can keep track of how much of what you're using, figure out you know, if you have this many grams of plant material, you need this many milliliters of solvent based on whatever recipe you're using. Graduated cylinders or glass measuring cups that measure milliliters are very handy. Bowls, I like glass bowls. Coffee grinders that you don't grind coffee in but that you only use to grind your herbs. Or a mortar and pestle if you pre prefer that. A blender or Vitamix will allow you to blend up your extracts and it breaks up the plant materials into really small bits so that more of the plant surface is being touched by the solvent so that you have a better chance of extracting all the good beneficial components. You want to use non-reactive cookware, stainless or glass, non-reactive utensils like stainless or um, wood, um, you need a tincture press, a ricer, or fine mesh strainers to strain the extracts off when they're done. Cheesecloth also helps because it keeps those little fine bits from going through into your finished product. Jars and bottles and funnels to get the extract into the bottles. So a few good books 
to teach you how to make herbal products and to give you good recipes so that you don't have to figure it out all on your own are these that are shown on this slide. The Herbal Medicine Maker's Handbook by James Green is a really good one, really in-depth. Um, Making Plant Medicine by Rich Ocheck, another good book. They're all really good at explaining why you do things in the way that they recommend. And then I've put two of Rosemary Gladstar's books here, The Family Herbal and Herbal Recipes for Vibrant Health, which are both really good books with lots of different kinds of recipes. Once again, so that you don't have to figure this all out. Why reinvent the wheel, right, if somebody else has already come up with a great recipe? And these are all commonly available online or through the um, individual themselves, the author. So they're also, you can break herbal extract making into two different methods, either hot process or cold process. They both provide equally good end results. Hot process takes less time because you're extracting the components over heat rather than over time, which would be approximately two to six weeks. So it's really personal preference and how much patience you have. You might want to try both and see if you prefer one or the other. Marks, menstruums, and maceration, the three M's of herbal extracts. The mark is the plant material you're using for your extraction. So for example, in this jar in the slide, it's full of peppermint. The menstruum, plural of which is menstrua, is the solvent that you're using for your extraction. In this case, we're using glycerin because we wanted a nice, sweet extract um, that we could use to make either tea, you can add it to hot water and it makes a nice, sweet peppermint tea, or to make a mouthwash or any number of other things where you would want to use peppermint. Maceration is the process of the menstruum extracting the constituents from the mark. Oils and salves. Medicinal oil infusions are used topically for both therapeutic and cosmetic purposes and you can make these yourself. Fixed oils are what you use to extract the chemical constituents from the plant and there are a lot of them. Some of of the ones that are mentioned here are almond oil, apricot kernel oil, which is that meaty little center part inside the seed of the apricot, olive oil, and you would want to choose one that didn't have a strong flavor on its own or a strong smell. A lighter olive oil would be better in this case. Copaiba oil, which comes from a South American tree and has healing properties on its own, jojoba, sesame, and there are any number of others, but these are just some of my favorites. You can combine your oils once they're done with other ingredients to make healing salves. So you could add it to, you could add shea butter, cocoa butter, mango butter, beeswax, uh, any number of things, um, some essential oil if you want it to have the properties of that um, to make your salves. You always want to use freshly dried plant material to make your oils. Freshly dried because the longer a plant has been dried, the more of its healing properties it's going to use. So, you know, so freshly dried plant material, if it starts out a really nice bright green, it should still be a pretty bright green once it's dried. If it started turning gray, throw it out and start over with new dried plant material. And also, you don't want to use fresh plant material because frequently it will get moldy in the oil because of the water content.